I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on fluids. We will begin with particle theory of matter. In earlier grades, to describe behavior of matter, we used this particular particle theory. It has six postulates which are listed here. We will discuss them one by one. Now after discussing the particle theory, I will have questions for you and uh, we'll answer those questions. Those questions are listed here. So these are the four questions which you need to answer after you understand what, what is particle theory of matter. You can actually pause the video now, try to understand these questions. So that when we are going through the particle theory, you have in mind uh, the kind of questions which could be asked on this topic, right? So now let's begin with the particle theory itself. As I was saying, particle theory of matter helps to describe behavior of matter. Now this is a very simplified form, I should say, and we normally use it only in the earlier grades, right? So, so let's say in the middle school. As you graduate to high school, you will learn more about these particles and then you will be describing it in slightly different ways, right? <clears throat> so that's kind of important to start and understand, right? So the particle theory of matter helps to describe the behavior of matter at this stage. So there are six points which we should always take care of. One is matter is made up of tiny particles so whatever it is it may be a paper or whatever it is made up of tiny particles right so for example these are the tiny particles it is made up of right so so that is how the matter can be considered right so then it says all particles are in constant motion so i placed these particles on the paper right so they can represent a matter but these particles are always moving and the movement is always at an axis right so they this particle here will be moved about this axis do you see that so it is always moving about the axis so that is the kind of movement so like to and fro movement do you understand so that is the kind of movement which each and every particle will be doing at any given instance of time right so that is how it will be moving so they are not at rest any time but they are always kind of moving this movement is very very tiny very small however there is a movement right that's kind of important to acknowledge so all particles are in constant motion third point is all particles of one substance are identical so if I have particles of exactly same types, then it is a pure substance. So the one which I have made here is a pure substance. So this is what I have drawn here, right? Now if I have impure substance or a substance which has two or more types of impurities, so mixture, let's say. So if I have a mixture, so let me make a mixture here. So in a mixture, there could be particles of two different, two or more types, right? So we could have particles of one type, right? And we could have particles of another type. So that forms a mixture. Do you understand? So this is a structure for a mixture. And that is how you are going to explain it. So in a mixture, we have two or more types of particles correct point four here is particles are attracted to each other right so this is very important to understand they are attracted so they can hold on to right so this is kind of a, a way that they hold on to one another right so they are attracted to one another that means they hold on to so that also gives them a structure so that gives them a structure so this gives you structure right and the structure could be of the type of a crystal so crystal is kind of a structure 
a definite arrangement. So the particles are attracted to each other and they are held in a particular pattern, right? So that gives them their structure also. So the particle theory helps us here to describe why different matter types have same structure, correct? So we call that as a structure. So any pure substance will have a fixed structure, right? That is what is important to understand. Now, point number five here is Temperature affects the speed at which particles move. Now what really happens is that if we have higher temperature, right? So, so if we have higher temperature, then what happens? Then the particles will move apart, right? So basically, if we have particles, then they will move apart at higher temperatures. So, so the particles will move further away, right? So this explains expansion. This explains expansion. So the substance can expand on heating. Do you understand? So they expand on heating. So if you cool it down, the temperature will be lower, then it kind of shrinks, comes closer. You get the idea, right? So. So the temperature affects the speed at which particles move. That is one thing. And it also ex explains us how do a matter expands or contracts. That means its volume can decrease or increase, right? So it can become smaller in size, right? Compact together, or it may occupy more volume. So that's what it explains. And six is, particles are close together in liquids and solids. Gas particles move quickly and have large spaces between them. So if you're talking about gas particles, they move quickly and they have large spaces between them. So if there's something like this, this is a gas particle, right? So they just fill up all the space. So gas will fill up all the space. So if you put gas in a container, it will occupy the whole volume, right? However, volume of solids and liquids is fixed. So that also explains why volume of solids and liquids is fixed. Correct? So this explains us two things. One, why volume of solids and liquids is fixed since they are close, compact, right? And in gases, it is not fixed. They can fill up the whole space, so the gas can occupy the whole volume. And second thing, which also is clear from here, is that flow, right? So we're talking about fluids. So, it, so what we see here is that liquids can flow. They can slide. Liquids can slide. We know liquids. can slide, there is a restriction, they, they are closed, but they can slide, so that is a kind of a flow, right? And gas particles can just flow freely all over, do you see that? So that is a kind of fluid, both are fluids, liquids and gases, both are fluids, since they can flow. So when we talk about fluids, we mainly talk about liquids and gases, and as far as the solids are concerned, think about like this. When you heat up a solid, it melts. It becomes liquid, right? So when you heat a solid, the particles become farther away. There is less attraction between the two. And therefore, liquid, it becomes kind of liquid and it flows. So as you heat a solid, it can flow. So that's the whole idea. So I hope with this you understand how to describe many behaviors and even the structure of a matter. So to summarize, a matter contains particles which are more or less fixed. I shouldn't say fixed, they are more or less fixed 
They are more or less fixed since the particles are in constant motion about a particular point. A pure substance will have identical particles, mixtures and impure substances will have particles of two or more kinds. When the temperature is increased, the structure increases in size since the particle movement is small. And when the temperature is decreased, they come compact, they become closer, so the volume may decrease. On heating, the particles sometimes move so farther apart that the state can also change. So the temperature affects speed with which the particles move, also can change the state of matter. If we heat solids, they may become liquid, and when we heat liquids, they may become gases, right, which you have seen in many examples, correct? So, so if you have ice, when you heat ice, it becomes water which can flow, and then if you heat it further, it vaporizes and can, can flow all over the place. So it becomes gas particles, correct? So that is how we could explain all this. Now there's one interesting question for you, which I should ask, which is, we talked about pure substances and mixture, right? So why do matter mixes? So how mixtures can be formed that you may think about. So mixture will be formed when I add particles of a different kind into a pure substance. So that means they will occupy the spaces inside, correct? And then a mixture can be formed. Another thing to look into is that particles attract each other. So the substance which has been put in the pure substance should be attracted more by the particles in which in which it has been put. So that is important to understand. Is that okay? So there are many things which you can explain with particle theory. Now, let's get to our questions. Now, here are four questions for you. They will help you to and show that you've understood the topic. Question number one here is, what is not true about particles of pure substance? There are three options. There are many types of particles. All particles are in constant motion. Particles attract each other. You need to answer what is not true about a pure substance, correct? So you can take your time, answer the question. Question number two here is, which has more particles in same volume? Solids, liquids, or gases? Question number three. In which state of matter the particles stay almost at the same position? Solids, liquids, or gases? Question number four. Which of the following can have particles of more than one kind? Pure gold, pure air, or iron, right? So I hope you got your answers. Now here is my solution. Question one, what is not true about particles of pure substance, right? So pure substance means they should have particles of one kind, right? So that means one kind only, right? That is what we mean by pure substance. So is there are many types of particles. So that is not true. So this one you have to circle. All particles are in constant motion. Yes, they are. Particles attract each other. Yes, they do. Question number two. Which has more particles in the same volume? So if I have this particular volume, then what can occupy which type of substance will have more particles? Solid, liquids, or gases? Well, as you know, as far as the gases are concerned, particles are far apart, correct? So gases will have very few. As far as liquids are concerned, they are compact. But as far as solids are concerned, they are kind of very, very close, right? So you have much, 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 much more particles if the same volume is occupied by a solid. Correct? So the answer is A for us. Clear? Question number three. In which state of matter 
the particles stay almost at the same position. So that is the state solids. They are very compact. They don't, they're not very free to move around, but about their axis only they move, right? So in solids, it is only movement about axis. That means just a point. So it is just moving slightly away from this point, kind of like this, but it's not moving from here to there. Do you understand? So that is why solids are very compact. In liquids and gases, they just move around all over the place. In liquids, they slide and then flow. In gases, it is like in any direction. Question number four. Which of the following can have particles of more than one kind? Well, this is similar to the first question, but you need to figure out which is a mixture here. Pure gold, pure air or iron. Now, that is confusing. I think pure air is a mixture of so many things, correct? So air has so many things. It has carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, oxygen, so many other gases. So pure air actually has mixture of so many gases. Iron is a pure substance, right? Iron has particles of just iron, right? But pure air is not a pure substance. It is mixture of many things, which includes, of course, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, oxygen, and most of it is what? Most of it is nitrogen. Correct? So major amount is nitrogen and all of the gases in trace amount. So that, that is what we have learned about particle theory. I hope you find it interesting and useful. Feel free to write your comment, share your views. And if you have any doubts, you can always send me an email on the given address. Correct? And if you have any questions, which you need me to answer, send me an email, I'll respond within a day or two. Thanks for your time and all the best.